Both aluminum electrolytic capacitors and tantalum capacitors are notorious for doing bad things when they're mistreated. Today, we'll take a closer look at specifically what happens when you bias these things the wrong way. And we'll also investigate what happens when you install two electrolytic capacitors back to back as a way of supposedly solving this problem. The key problem with electrolytic capacitors is that applying DC of a polarity opposing that of the capacitor can cause catastrophic failure. But electrolytic capacitors are generally constructed in two different ways, and each construction fails in a different way. An aluminum electrolytic capacitor with an electrolyte that isn't solid basically contains aluminum foils separated by a paper spacer, which is saturated with a liquid or gel-like electrolyte. The foils and the spacer are wound in a way that resembles a D-cell battery. There's a very thin insulating layer of aluminum oxide formed by anodization that acts as the dielectric of the capacitor. Applying a positive voltage to the tantalum anode material in the electrolytic bath forms the oxide barrier layer that serves as the dielectric. Its thickness is proportional to the applied voltage. The second aluminum foil is called the cathode foil and serves as the electrical connection to the negative terminal of the capacitor. But not all aluminum electrolytic capacitors use gel electrolytes. Some also use a solid electrolyte, and these have a different construction. We've got both types, and we'll show how they differ when you mistreat them. Our first capacitor is of the wound gel electrolyte type. It's rated for 25 volts in the right direction, but we're going to apply DC voltage in the wrong direction. Our DC supply displays both voltage and current. We'll slowly increase the DC voltage in the wrong direction. You'll sometimes hear that aluminum electrolytics fail as an open circuit, but the actual failure is more complicated than that. You see that it doesn't take much voltage to put the DC supply into current limiting. So when you apply even a few volts of DC of the wrong polarity, the power supply starts putting out a whole lot of current. As the electrolyte boils off, the DC current starts to drop. Eventually, the capacitor goes open circuit, but not before it passes a significant amount of current. Now we'll try the same stunt on an aluminum electrolytic that contains a solid electrolyte. The same basic thing happens. It doesn't take much voltage in the wrong direction to send the cap into catastrophic meltdown. But this device fails in a slightly different way than that of a cap with a gel electrolyte because the electrolyte doesn't boil away. We've torn down the two types of aluminum electrolytics we destroyed. Here you can see the foil layers and the paper separator of the wound gel electrolyte cap. The electrolyte, of course, has boiled away. Next to it, we have the solid electrolyte aluminum cap. The anode is visible, surrounded by what's left of the electrolyte. The dielectric is formed on the surface of the anode. Clearly, they have a different structure, which illustrates why they fail in somewhat different ways. Now, we turn our attention to tantalum electrolytic caps. Here, a pellet of porous tantalum metal serves as an anode covered by an insulating layer of tantalum pentoxide that forms the dielectric, surrounded by a liquid or solid electrolyte as a cathode. The tantalum pentoxide layer is very thin and has a relatively high permittivity, giving tantalum capacitors a high capacitance per volume and lower weight. The tantalum capacitors we have here are called pearls. They're dipped in resin and designed for PCB mounting. Tantalum capacitors have a reputation for failing even more catastrophically than aluminum electrolytics when reversed biased. So of course, we're going to test that theory. We'll start with zero volts reversed bias and slowly increase the voltage. The super sensitivity of tantalum capacitors to DC probably means you just don't want to use tantalums when there is any chance of a reverse DC bias. We first tried two aluminum electrolytics connected anode to anode. 
These are 16 volt devices and we can see they handle that DC voltage just fine. Of course, if you exceed that DC voltage, all the bets are off. Next, we'll try 10 lump electrolytics connected anode to anode. These are also 16 volt capacitors and we can see that they're handling things just fine. The moral of our little experiment seems to be that you just don't want to reverse bias electrolytic capacitors even by a little bit. And you particularly don't want to do so with tantalum electrolytics. Finally, when you mount these things in a circuit, they should be probably kept away from anything that's even remotely flammable in case the worst happens. And for more teardown videos like this, go to eeworldonline.com.